Warning. This game is not suitable for minors. Content warnings include blood, mal gore, past childhood abuse and trauma, obsessive and unhealthy behavior towards others, stalking, breaking and entering, bodily fluids, potential not safe for work scenes, and anxiety. Viewer's discretion is advised. August 24th. The annoying buzzing of your phone made your eyes sluggishly blink open. Dim daylight filtered in from your one small bedroom window, reminding you that it was time to get up for the day. You reached over to your phone and blindly pressed on the smooth screen surface until your alarm was silenced. For a few moments, you laid there. You turn on your back and stare up at the off-white ceiling of your bedroom, taking in the morning noise, soft chirping outside your window, the occasional passing of a car, distant muted voices. Another day. You dragged yourself out of bed and headed to the shower. The water, chilled at first, slowly warmed to help wake up your stiff joints and heavy limbs. After you got out, you looked yourself in the mirror. There was a hint of shadow underneath your eyes, and you felt you should try to get some sleep tonight. Otherwise, it didn't look too bad, if not for a bit tired. You shook your head a little, clearing your thoughts, and went to get dressed. You stood in front of your closet, thinking about what to wear. Yeah, I'm gonna wear something cute. You wanted to put some effort into your look, but not overdo it. You put on your nicest pair of pants and a newer shirt. Feeling refreshed and finally ready to face the day, you went into your living room to grab your work things. Your apartment was a small one-bedroom. You could place one foot in the living room, kitchen, and bedroom all at once, with your other foot in the bathroom at the same time. It was the first thing you did when you moved in, and it amused you. Now, it almost felt a little suffocating. Regardless, this was your home. It had been for the last two years since you were finally free from the clutches of your overbearing mother. Just the thought of her screeching at you for something or another made you shiver. Now wanting to dwell on things, you reached for your badge hanging on the wall. A faded plastic card with your picture on it dangling from a ready lanyard, you ran your thumb over the place where your name used to be printed, now written in black marker. You've worked at a second-hand bookstore since you were 16. During your first year, with the help of the owner, Madeline Smith, you published your first novel as a teenager. It wasn't a massive hit, but it did help you along since you were young and child labor laws restricted your working hours. The royalties you received were nice, but had since dwindled. Over the years, you had gotten calls from your former editor, asking if you had anything you'd like her to see, but every time she called you, you declined. Eventually, she stopped calling and told you to contact her if you wanted to publish again. You had written things, but none of it felt the same as the first book, and you held yourself back. Right now, the bookstore and Max were enough for you. And the shop held a special place in your heart. It was a decent job, and you were well known by the regulars there. The shop had expanded in recent years, and you were up for a promotion soon. You felt like this was a no-brainer. You would be perfect for the position. You've put almost five years of hard work into this place. Either way, it was between you and your co-worker, Del. Del started working two years ago. He was older than you by a few years, and he was a decent guy. Well, to you at least. He started working there when you were 18, and he was 21. Now you were almost 21, and he was 23. He treated you like a co-worker. Polite, but not overly friendly or rude. You could always count on him to help you if you became sick or missed a day or two. In hiring him, Madeline somehow cultivated the perfect team for the store. I liked Del. He was great and made work fun when you were together. To everyone else, he seemed monotonous and grumpy. Max hired him after the expansion, voicing her concerns about overworking you. You knew she'd make the right decision about a promotion when the time came. Think about all this on the way to work. You locked up and left your apartment building. The way to the shop was a long bus ride and a short walk. You stuck your headphones in and worked on some writings while you did your commute. These days, the most you did was brainstorm ideas. If you took them somewhere, great. If not, it was added to your list of potential subjects to write about. Almost like a personal writing prompt you made for yourself. During your time on the bus, a text came through. It was from your childhood best friend, Tris Soli. Yeah, how's it coming, Lionel? He was the same age as you. You met when you were 10, when you decided to go to public school instead of being homeschooled. As a child, you were not that much different than you are now. Quiet, somewhat reserved, mostly observing. Something in you called out to Triss, and he stuck to you like glue, talking all about the different things he was into, whether you were into the same things or not. He was there for you in ways no one else could be. The number of times you ran away from home to escape your mother's neurotic tendencies. 
when she had finally snapped and tried to drown you in a bathtub when you were 15. Holy heck, what is going on here? Jeez, you've got some real issues here. Tris was there to hold your hand, to hold you when you were shivering and freezing and hungry, and to help you through the toughest situations that life threw at you. He helped you if anything you needed. Literally anything. He came from a well of family and wasn't afraid of letting it be known, especially when he could come to your rescue. Now that you were adults, he lived in his own house and was still in school, working towards his dream job. You appreciated Tris and did your best not to take advantage of him. Especially since he never expected anything in return except for you to continue doing your best. In any case, Tris was a special friend for you. He was always there for you, no matter what, even if he could be a little pushy. The sound of the bus breaking pulled you out of your thoughts. You sent a quick text back to Tris, letting him know you made it to work just fine. Always grateful that the city had placed a bus stop just on the corner of the same block the bookstore resided on, you hopped off and quickly walked the remaining distance to its doors. You used your key to enter the store since it was just before opening hour. You put your things away in your usual cubby and put yourself in your working shoes, metaphorically. The day passed quickly and uneventfully. Somehow, nine hours had flown by and you were already getting ready to leave when your co-worker approached you. Oh my god, you look so freaking grumpy, Ayo! Uh, so this might be an odd question, Lionel. Sounds like a statement to me. He sighed. How do you usually get home? By bus and walking, why? Uh, I didn't want to bring it up because I thought it might be a coincidence, but I keep seeing this weird person outside. This city's full of weirdos now, I mean, heck, I, I, I can pretty much just like chuck a rock outside my window and it will immediately hit a stalker at this point. What do they look like? Tallish, red hair, and oh, there, look. You quickly turn to see Tris standing outside one of the main windows of the shop. When you notice him, he smiled and waved. You waved back and looked at Del. That's not a weird person, Del. This is my friend, Tris. Must be here to pick me up. Del gave you a narrow look, but shrugged. You can never be too careful, but whatever. Have a good evening, Lionel. You too. You gathered your personal effects and submitted your hours for the day, going outside to meet Triss after one last wave towards Dell. What are you doing here? He shrugged nonchalantly, sticking his hand in his pockets as you two start meandering in the direction of the bus stop. Yeah, I thought you might want to hang out for a bit, get some dinner? You wince, giving him a sheepish smile. Sorry, Triss. I promised someone I'd hang out with them in the game when I got back home tonight. Next time, yeah? His face fell and he looked annoyed. Always with the game, huh? That's fine. Can we at least grab some takeout? Eh, sure. Why not? Yeah, my treat, okay? You sure? <laughs> of course. Don't worry about it so much. Alright. Thanks, Tris. The two of you walked to a nearby restaurant and ordered some Chinese takeout. The bus wasn't scheduled to arrive for another 15 minutes, so you both snacked on some fortune cookies while you waited. Huh. Mine says a new change is coming, and it may lead you down a new path. Bit ominous, don't you think? Spooky. Let's see what mine says. You break open the cookie and hold the cookie part in one hand while you fish out the flimsy little paper. You unrolled it and read it aloud. Deceit in the form of comfort is still deceit. The heck? Okay, I take mine back. Yours is way more ominous. Too bad these don't have lucky numbers on the back. Mine probably would have been 666. No poo. The bus arrived and you boarded, taking a seat somewhere in the middle. Surprisingly, you felt someone sit next to you and you looked up to see Triss sliding in. When did Triss start taking the bus? He had a look of disgust on his face as he glanced around the dirty floor and crumpled trash. Then he noticed you watching and raised one of his eyebrows. What? I never thought I'd see you in a bus or even public transit. Exactly! Jeez. I want to see you home. It's late. You snickered and rolled your eyes. The ride was the same as earlier, plus one person next to you, and with lighting change, soon you were stepping off the bus and walking to your apartment. The building of your apartment, while it wasn't best looking, did have security measures. There was a camera outside the door, along with a pin pad used to input a code that unlocked the door to the lobby. You lingered outside, waiting to say goodbye to Tris before punching the code in. Besides grossly underestimating the square footage, the only other sketchy thing about your lease was the underlying and bold statement, do not share your door code with anyone, ever. 
You always wonder if someone unruly came in and caused the scene because someone shared the code. Didn't matter anyway. You just needed to know someone to get in. You've seen other people opening the door for your neighbor's friends and family members without question. Well, time to go. Trist frowned for a moment but nodded and smiled. Thanks for letting me take you home at least. Are you going to be okay on your way back? Yeah, yeah, my driver's sitting around the corner. No need to worry about me. You crane your neck to look at the end of the block. Sure enough, a tan car with dark windows sat there. Trademark Soli security symbol. You turned back to your friend and waved. Later, Tris. See you later, Lionel. He walked away, and as soon as he was far enough, you quickly pushed the buttons of your door password. Uh... <laughs> I, I must be a gosh darn child, but I'm gonna go for it. The door chimed and you pushed against it, walking in. You took a few steps in the lobby, distractedly trying to juggle your food and keys when you bumped into someone. Oh, no, I I'm sorry. You bent down to grab your keys since you managed to hang onto your food just barely. It's okay, but are you okay, Lionel? You looked up to see your neighbor, Sophie Graves. Well, why am I referring to them as their full names? Like, the only reason I would ever address someone by their full name is as their contact on my phone. Like, what the heck? She was a short girl. You almost could mistake her for a middle schooler rather than a high schooler. She moved in the apartment directly above you a few months ago, and from what you've noticed and heard, she seemed to be alone. You hadn't seen any sort of parental figures in her life or around the building, so you figured she must have been emancipated like you around her age. You also didn't want to creep her out and ask about it. There never really was a good time to bring up something like that. You had become well acquainted with her due to the fact that she was big on gaming, and an even bigger drama enthusiast, which usually led to her jumping up and down in excitement over anything interesting. She may be small, but those tiny feet of hers made a lot of noise in the dead hours of the night. Uh, let's see. It was the worst thing about living here. You didn't mind it too much. I don't mind it. I mean, hey, um, I like the sound of feetsies. <laughs> that sounded so bad. What is wrong with me? She was such a nice person and apologized every time you saw her each other. She even ordered you coffee to your doorstep before you left for work sometimes on nights that she was particularly rambunctious. Sophie was overall just a fireball of energy, packaged in a small frame, ridiculously long hair, and admittedly adorable cat ear beanie. Uh, one of these times you try to get to know her some more? You had no desire to get to know her? That's a child! She's in high school! How old are people in high school anyway? I don't want to know! She's a child! You have no desire to get to know her! Besides being incredibly annoying with her incessant stopping when she was a kid and that felt creepy to you. Hey, Sophie, where are you off to right now? I'm heading down to that thigh place that opened up around the corner. Gotta feed the beast, you know? The beast? Yeah. Yeah, me. She gestured to herself entirely. I'm the beast. You chuckled and shook your head. All right, then. Be careful out there, okay? Ah, don't worry too much, Lionel. Besides, I've got a trusty friend with me, Sparky McBolt. Do I even want to know? Sophie grinned in a mischievous way. Probably not. Have fun with your food and stuff. Maybe I'll see you online tonight? She occasionally sends gifts to you uh, after you told her that you played the online game, Sinister. She played it from its release and was currently max level, so all she did was run around and help newbies whenever she logged on. Definitely, maybe. She waved and scampered off towards the door as you headed for the elevator. 20 minutes later. You're booting up your computer. It was one of your more luxurious items, custom built and fairly new. You treated it like you would a child. Almost. You figured you should log on to GamerGab and talk with your online friend, Ty. You did promise to help him out with something in the game later. You first met Ty several years ago, during your time after you'd been emancipated from your mother. You were in your first tiny studio apartment and Sinister was comfort to you, alone at night. It was a whole world separated from your own that you would lose yourself and forget about the frightening noises during your usual sleeping hours. You never admit it, but on those dark nights when you only had your laptop and a basic internet connection, you let yourself feel afraid and lonely. It was a tough situation you were in, and you barely managed to make it through, if not for Max and the bookstore. Ty was there to help you for those nights, keep you company when you couldn't sleep, make you laugh when you were sad, and was willing to lend a hand in your questing adventures. It was probably more of your best friend at this point than Triss was, but you never tell Triss that. Once the computer was on, you typed in your password. Uh, my password? <laughs> I could have made my password the same thing as I put earlier, so whatever. <laughs> oh god. 
uh my gamer gap username i guess i'll go for what i usually go for. i couldn't put in my username uh god damn it lion i guess hey ty hey hey make it home okay yeah bestie commuted home with me today yeah that's nice admittedly i always worry when you have to walk the city at night or even ride a bus yeah, those public transit buses are nasty F Ready to jump in the game? Aw oh, man, Ty, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not really feeling it anymore. Everything alright? No. I feel lost or something. I don't know what I'm doing anymore and I just... I don't know. Getting in your own head about the writing thing again? Yeah, I know so. I feel stuck. Like nothing's happening. <sighs> SSDD, you know? You haven't met anyone new or done anything exciting recently no i want to but i'm not only a worried human being i'm an anxious being too uh, you're in luck then uh, i came across a new app recently it's marketed as a friend finder thing but it, most people use it for dating care to give it a try yeah will i find you on it <laughs> yeah <laughs> no. We don't even live near each other, remember? Yeah, I know. <sighs> the world still hates me. Oh, hush. Anyway, the app? Alright, fine. I'll give it a go. Can't be any worse than the others, right? That's the spirit. The app is called Indecent. You're joking, right? I indecent? Yeah, I know the name's not the best. Almost like the creator couldn't come up with something better. <laughs> God damn it, developer. But it's a good app, honestly. Huh. Alright, I'll set up tonight and see how it goes. Okay, I'm gonna head off now. It's late here. Or early. Whatever way you look at it. Oh god, sorry, Ty BB. Ty, best boy forever. Yeah? Take it easy, love. I'll be here if you need me. Thanks, Ty. Talk to you later. You logged off your computer and changed into your normal pajamas. Laying in bed, you pulled up your phone and searched for the indecent app that Taipan talked about. It downloaded fairly quickly, and you started to create your profile. You put in your name, and your age is 21. I am young as heck, holy heck, since your birthday was in five days, and then a series of questions popped up. You're not even 21 yet, my dude. You have a preferred gender for potential new friends. Uh, no preferences. What's the best way to communicate with you? Written or verbal honestly i'm just terrible at communicating <laughs> like regardless of it's written or verbal i am terrible at it so oh god you know what i'll go for verbal whatever you thought that question was odd but you continued on what type of music do you listen to out there or what's closest to your personal taste oh huh i mean i do like lo-fi but uh God, man, they don't have like parody. Like, frick, I listen to way too much parody music. But yeah, I, I would go for lo fi, I guess. You have a favorite color out of these purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, pink. And lately I've been feeling in a bit of a red mood. Uh, what do you look for in a friend? Someone who shares the same interests as me, someone who cares about my feelings and is there for me. Opposites attract. I want us to be able to learn from each other. Uh, let's see. I guess... Uh... I guess if they have the same interests, whatever. Thank you for your responses. At this time, you don't need to do or submit anything further. We will notify you in a few days when we are done cultivating your matches. Well, that was certainly something. You close out the app and set your phone down after double-checking that your alarms were set. Exhaustion pulled at your eyelids and soon you were asleep. August 26. Yeah, after spending your day off yesterday playing Sinister with Taipan and Co, you felt refreshed and ready for work. Now you are picking your outfit for the day, fresh out of the shower. Your commute to work was quiet and uninterrupted. In fact, the whole morning felt rather laid back, starting at your apartment and up to a point where you clocked in to work. Max was busy on the phone in the office and Dell wasn't around yet. Seeing no one had come in for the last 10 minutes, you grabbed some new inventory from the back and loaded it up on the dolly, wheeling it out on the main floor. The next half hour was spent unboxing new arrivals and setting up a display. You were carrying a particularly adorable set of mugs and magnetic bookmarks when a tap on your shoulder made you flinch in surprise. Bleh! Turning around, you spot Tris laughing. Damn it, Tris! I'm sorry. 
That was too good. What are you doing here? Don't you have an exam today? You turn around and finish walking to your destination. Tris followed behind like an eager puppy. Yeah, in about two hours, but don't worry. Want to see you today. You shot him a querying look and set the box on a small table while you pulled out the mugs one by one. You used the price tag gun to stick tags at the bottom of the mugs. Then you put the mugs on the shelf. Mundane work, but easy to do while having conversation. Also, I was wondering, uh, if you have any book recs today? Since when do you care about my opinion? You chuckled and gave him a jokingly jaded look. Triss's eyebrows pinched together slightly and he gave a half-hearted shrug. His face appeared to be a little more red as well. I've always cared, Lionel. Why is he so blushy? This is so strange to me. The sincerity and utter poignance in his tone caught you off guard and you met his green eyes. The seconds seemed to fall away. You felt your heart beating solidly in your chest. Was your heart rate quickening? Your face seems to start to feel a little warm. Were you blushing? What was this? It's it's called horny. That's what you feel. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding, of course. And then it shattered at the sound of the bell above the door chiming out. You turn around, noticing someone had walked in, but you could only see their backs as they headed towards a different section of the store. Morning and welcome. Let me know if you need help. They raised an arm in acknowledgement and continued on their way. Tris looked annoyed when you turned back around, but quickly smiled. So, do you? Do I have any recommendations? Oh, well, you know, not really. I'm not really sure what genre you're looking for. You've never been much of a reader, you know? He blushed then, looking away like a child caught in a lie. That's... well, okay, I'll give you that. You both laughed. Yeah, I don't know what I like yet. What's your favorite book? Ah, that was a good question. You took a moment to think it over. Uh, something in fantasy with magical creatures, something romantic with just the right amount of spicy, oh god. Something dramatic like a detective novel or murder mystery, something involving horror. Yes! Spooky poo all the way. Spooky. Oh god, spooky dookie all the way. <laughs> no! Oh god. <sighs> you know, you don't have to read that genre if you don't want to. Ah, oh, thanks. I hate spooky dookies. I'm gonna give you a spooky dookie. <laughs> anyway, you look at it. You won't know until you give it a try. That's true. Yeah, I'll take what you say into consideration. Shouldn't you go now? It's a bit of a drive from here, right? Ah, oh, crap. You're right. See you later, Lionel. See ya. Tris gave you one last wave and hurried out the door, not having bought anything after all. You turn back to the mugs, get into a rhythm again. Pick up, tag, put on shelf. Pick up, tag, put on shelf. Pick up, tag, put on... Excuse me, Ken. Uh, customer. I put the mug on a customer. Yes. <laughs> it scared you more violently than Tris did, causing you to jump. The mug tumbled out of your hands and you flinched, waiting for the impending shatter. But it didn't come. You looked to see that the customer that entered earlier, who was a man, was bent over with, with his arm extended out. Oh my god, he's bending over for me. Nice. In his palm was the mug you dropped. When you met his striking blue eyes, he grinned didn't mean to startle you. No problem. Ah, yes, the under love interest. How's it going, my dear? He stood and straightened out, offering you the mug. He was very tall. Probably the tallest person you've seen in a while. What's with tall yandere's? I want a short yandere. Someone give me a short yandere, please. Like, I need a yandere which I can pick up and yeet at my enemies, please. <laughs> you took the mug. Um, thanks. You tagged the mug and put it on the shelf before setting the tagging gun down and turning around towards the customer. Did you need help with something? Ah, uh, yes, I'm ready to check out. Alright, okay, let's go to the register. He stepped out of the way and followed you to the counter. You walked behind it and gestured for him to place what he intended to purchase. He placed the book down with the title right set up for you to easily read, and he slid forward slightly. You glanced down at it, seeing the title was that of your favorite book, Third Door on the Left. You have great taste. The man blinked at you, raising an eyebrow. His face seemed a little more red than before. Excuse me. You blinked in return, then shook your head, laughing lightly. In books, I mean. No. Oh. He laughed as well. Thank you. Would you believe me if I told you I don't read much? You glanced down at the book, then back up at the customer. It was true. He didn't look like a typical bookworm, but maybe you weren't certain what a book lover should look like. Yeah, I might. Haven't seen you around before. Are you new to the area? What makes you say that? 
He looked incredibly uncomfortable, and his eyes averted yours. Yeah, I've been working here for a long time, so I know most of the regulars. Pretty sure I remember someone who enjoyed the same types of books as me. Uh, I'm sorry if that seemed like an intrusive question. He visibly relaxed, nodding and smiling at you. He asked you an intrusive question this time. Do you always work alone? It definitely was a strange question, but you dismissed the weird feeling it gave you. This is what's gonna kill you, my dude. Uh, the owner is in the back right now, and my co-worker should be coming in soon. He's never really late. Is the two of you? You must get along well, then. Yeah, he's pretty chill and easy to work with. Yeah, I've come here a few times, but not enough to be considered regular. You do look familiar, though. You tilted your head when he said that. Yeah, I should. Been here for five years. Up until about a year ago, I was the only one working, other than the owner. No, I've seen you somewhere else. But I can't place it right this second. You racked your brain for an answer as well. Oh, oh, you mu you, you must have seen me on the YouTube channel. I mean, heck, uh, uh, I I'm sure you've heard of uh, my channel. It's called uh, Manly Badass Hero. I mean, heck, I might not look it, but yes, I have definitely been that. <laughs> oh, God. Ah, oh, I'm not, I'm not. Like, heck, we both have very different vibes, okay? That's just a chill dude with a seriously manly voice, which I could grate cheese over. And I'm just me. Like, I'm I'm the dude, like, you don't want to bring home to your parents because you know that it's likely I would say something that uh, would make both of them blush. Uh, and you wouldn't want to see what happens when I get along with your parents. Ah, <laughs> God, that was so bad. Oh, where could he have seen you? In the middle of a commute? It wasn't possible, since the bus you took was usually pretty packed in the mornings. You never left your apartment except for work and the occasional outing with Tris sometimes, so you were at a loss. Ah, you're an indecent, right? You know what? The more I see, like, indecent being capitalized like that, I'm thinking it's like only fans, but for friends? <laughs> what the heck? He snapped his fingers when he said that, like a typical aha moment. She just felt embarrassed. You could do anything but sheepishly smile. Guilty. <laughs> this is embarrassing, isn't it? He laughed and you couldn't help but laugh with him. Wait, so you're on it too. And you saw me. Yeah, I believe you're a match of mine. Yeah, I guess I haven't looked at the app since I finished the registration. He grinned, looking away. Ah, I get it. First time using an app? You wilted a bit and nodded in defeat. You got me total noob here. I have no idea how any of this works. Like, seriously, I don't know how the hell dating apps work. Like, seriously, you got me total noob here. Also, I have tried other apps, but usually deleted within a day or two. What's your name? Maybe I'll find you on there later. Well, that came out of nowhere. But hey, you took the plunge. Ty will be proud of you. Yeah, sorry. He cleared his throat, blushing. My name is Griffin Wells. Nice to meet you, Griffin Wells. You reached out your hand and he grasped it with his. Pleasure to mine. His eyes flicked down at your name tag. Lionel? Ho? Your hands lingered in a hole until you pulled back, smiling and looking back down at the book. You scanned it quickly. Oh, you know we're having a special. Well, uh, which you may be. Oops, seems like you weren't the only one feeling flustered. You both looked at each other again and laughed. Sorry, you were saying? No, oh, just, well... He reached up to rub the back of his neck, his face flushing deeply. Yeah, I apologize if this seems a bit too forward, I guess. I was wondering if you would maybe like to go on a date tonight, seeing as we're already matched on our app. He had a precious yet vulnerable smile on his face, hopeful. It was refreshing to see, and it made you feel cozy and warm. Huh. Uh, however, you felt nervous all of a sudden. You had fun with the banter, but now you felt a little weird about the question. Wow, this day just kept getting better and better, you felt. Uh, I guess this day just got better and better. Yeah, that'll be great. What did you have in mind? Yeah, there's a nearby lounge that's pretty neat. Uh, the Night Owl? It's not too crowded or noisy, so it wouldn't be hard to carry conversation. You mulled it over a few seconds before giving a decisive nod. Okay, what time were you thinking? Well, what time does the shift end? 4.30. How 6.30 sound? Perfect. I'll see you around 6.30 then. You quickly finished the transaction and handed him the book. Thanks, Lionel. I'll see you later. Take care. Griffin gave you one last smile and left the store. Yeah, after making sure there were no other patrons in the store, you quickly went to the bathroom to splash some water on your face, wondering what just happened actually happened for real. When you returned to the front, you heard the doorbell again. 
Dell walked in as you were tidying up the checkout area. He passed by you and dropped his hands on your head, ruffling your hair. Morning, Lionel. You swatted at his hand playfully. Morning! It's almost noon, Dell! Right. Almost, therefore. Still morning. He shot you some cheesy finger guns as he headed towards the back. You smiled and shook your head. Oh my god. Once your work day was over, which dragged on seemingly longer than usual, you rushed to get home in time to clean up and get ready to meet Griffin. You were so preoccupied with googling icebreakers just in case and appropriate outfit choices you barely noticed when your stop came. You hopped off the bus and started walking towards your building. The day was transitioning into evening, the last bits of sunlight spilling between tall buildings and even taller skyscrapers in the distance. It cast long shadows on the ground, stretching almost infinitely. There was enough light left, however, that you easily saw your upstairs neighbor, Sophie, hovering around the entrance to the apartment building. She seemed uneasy and fidgety with the way she messed with the edge of her sleeves, her gaze looking everywhere but not focusing on any one spot, until she saw you. The moment her amber eyes settled on your figure, she jumped up, waving both her arms in a dramatic fashion. Lionel? Lionel? Suddenly worried, you hurried over to her in a jog. An apprehensive feeling in your gut was telling you that something was extremely wrong. Sophie wouldn't be waiting outside for you if it wasn't. What is it? What's wrong? Her eyes were big with concern as she reached out to grab your arms firmly. I don't know what happened or who it was. Who it was? What? Did someone hurt you? No. It's not me, Lionel. She bit her lip, looking away. I was coming by to drop something off at your door. When I walked up, your door was open. You felt color drain from your face, your heart beating heavily now. What? I didn't look inside. I closed the door and came down here to wake. You felt a painful rush of fear hearing that. Sophie, you shouldn't have touched the door at all. If someone was in there, you could have been hurt. She gave a half-hearted smile. Gee... I'm telling you about possible break-in at your place and you worry about me? Thanks, Lionel. Do you want to walk up together? Safety numbers and all. Sure. She punched in her door code and held the door open for you to follow. You've got Sparky McBolt on you? Psh! As always. She patted her hip, which was hidden under the oversized hoodie. The two of you made the journey up to your floor and your apartment in silence. Anxiety gnawed at your stomach and there was a feeling of fear festering in your chest. The only thing you could do was clench your jaw while the elevator rose level by level. Once you heard a ding and the doors opened, both yours and Sophie's feet hit the floor hard, pounding like a drumbeat in the silence. You gradually slowed down as you approached the door, almost tripping but steadying yourself. You reached for the keys in your pocket before you remembered that the door was open. Your mouth felt dry as you swallowed uncomfortably, high on nerves, and your hand shakingly reached for the door. What if they're still here? Oh my god. Sophie did nothing to lower her tone, which made you jump like a startled cat. You would have bristled like one as well as you turn on her with a sharp look. Would you please keep it down? Her eyes widened and she nodded. Sorry. Fed up with the feeling of suspense, you finally grabbed your doorknob, trying hard to settle your freight senses. You opened your door and inside was nothing. You and Sophie shared a glance as you stepped in. She had her hand underneath her sweater, resting on Sparky McBolt. You assumed. You threw your gaze everywhere, trying to find something, anything suspicious, but you are met with, again, nothing. Huh. Hello? If you're here, show yourself! We're armed! You felt Sophie whack you on the arm, but you didn't avert your gaze from any possible movement. Silence responded back. Seemed like nothing was there. You continued walking through the apartment. There wasn't much to see, since it was so small. Yet as you looked at some things on a shelf in the living room, you heard Sophie's voice call you from the bedroom. Lionel, in here! You ran to your bedroom. Sophie pointed towards your dresser as you came in. You followed with your eyes and looked at your dresser. There were some clothes haphazardly dangling from the tops of your closed drawers, but nothing really noticeable. You blushed at the state of it. Yeah, what about it? I'm not a neat freak about how I put my clothes away. Sophie sighed dramatically, rolling her eyes. Not that, you idiot! On the front of the dresser and down on the ground. He leaned forward. Something was dripping. Down the front of the middle and last drawer. Finally on the ground in a crumpled pile was a pair of your underwear. You thought they might be covered in the same something, but at that moment you didn't want to investigate. That alone touched them any further. Oh my god, wait, wait. Is this plushy underwear stealer back again? God damn. Sophie glanced around one last time and exclaimed suddenly. 
Lionel, look, there's a scuff mark here. He turned around and again looked at where she pointed. Walking towards the mark, you crouched down, rubbing your finger on a portion of it. Indeed, the telltale sign of rubber from a shoe rubbed off on a smooth, hard surface. Were they running? They might have heard me close the door. Yeah, you you cut them off before they could finish, Sophie. Or maybe you got them to finish by you like closing the door. I have no idea. Either way, I don't want to know. Her voice was small and fearful. Maybe you were right earlier. Sophie, how long were you waiting for me to get home? Well, I went downstairs a little more than an hour ago. And maybe closer to two hours? I didn't want to miss you. You deflated. So it's possible they're already long gone. Can't we check the CCTV or something? Let's continue looking. I didn't find anything out in the living room. Sophie held up a finger in a matter-of-fact way. Yeah, but you didn't know what you were looking for. Now you do. Come on. You follow behind Sophie, just as she said. You notice another scuff mark at the same time she did. This time right outside your bedroom door. You both took another, closer look around the living room. You went back to the shelf you were looking at earlier. It was a small bookshelf you had underneath one of your living room windows. Something about it was bugging you earlier. This time, as you were inspecting it, you noticed why. Some things had been moved just slightly, even not enough to notice. If it hadn't been for the amount of dust on top of the surface, at the same time you noticed that you felt a soft breeze. You moved the thin curtain that was hanging over the window to the side. Like a stone dropping into a pool of water, your heart plummeted to your stomach, and you felt its contents rise to the base of your throat. The window was open maybe a few inches. You knew enough about opening and closing that particular window that it had probably gotten stuck, and that's why whoever was in your apartment today wasn't able to shut it properly. After a few moments of silence, Sophie noticed you weren't moving. Uh, Lionel? Did you find something? It took you a second or two to compose yourself, and you straightened up, turning to look at your young neighbor. The window was open. Sophie's face paled, and she gasped. Oh my god, Lionel, we need to call the police or something. Now you decide to call the police? Like, not two hours ago? When you could have gotten this settled? No, that's not... I mean, what could they do? You could have called them two hours ago! What do you mean? We've got evidence right there in your bedroom. And maybe there's fingerprints on the glass. Her whole attitude changed into a more serious one, which was a severe juxtaposition to her normal, playful self. They'll be able to take it and run it through the database thingy and find out who did this. You've been watching too much CSI. But anyway, yeah, police will be the right call. All right, let's call. Sophie nodded resolutely and pulled out her phone. The next hour was a blur of officers and law enforcement in and out of your apartment. When all was said and done, you sat on your couch with Sophie in silence for a few minutes before the both of you got up and went to the door. Are you going to be okay, Lionel? Yeah, I'll be fine. I'm heading out to meet a friend in a few minutes. Okay, take care. You as well. Oh, and Soph? Yeah? Thank you for telling me about everything. Appreciate it. Well, of course. Thank you for taking me seriously. You gave her a tiny awkward wave and she left. You barely had the time to breathe after all of that, let alone think. When you glanced at your phone, it was nearly 7 o'clock already. Ah, poo. You were going to be way past the acceptable amount of time to be late for a date. In the back of your mind, a small voice wondered if you should really be worrying about a date right now, especially after everything that just transpired. But you shoved it away. You couldn't bear to be in your apartment any longer. And this might be a nice distraction. In record time, you got cleaned up and changed, and you were on a bus going in the direction of the lounge you agreed on earlier. On the way, you felt your phone vibrate a few times, either from Gamergab or Tris, but you didn't feel like responding right then. Once you were off the bus, you ran to the restaurant, taking a glance at your phone. 7.21. Ouch. Your timing was impeccable, at least. Just as you rounded the corner of the block that the lounge was on, you thought you saw the back of Griffin walking out of the front door and turning to leave. You called out, Griffin! Your hunch was correct, and the man you met earlier turned around, a surprised look on his face. When he saw you running, he grinned and waited. Hey! You were more out of breath as you gasped out a greeting. Yeah, I'm sorry. There was a huge thing. Something happened at the apartment. Try to hurry. Griffin laughed at the way you start a new sentence with each breath. He held up a hand to stop you. Hey, don't worry about it. It's more concerned that I was just stood up. I'm glad to know that's not the case. He smiled warmly at you. Hungry? You grinned and nodded. Extremely. You followed him into the lounge. It was a nice place. The lighting wasn't too dim, there was relaxing music playing slowly, and there weren't many people around. The host raised his eyes when he saw Griffin again, but after noticing you, he smiled and led you two to a seat. 
Wow, this place looks great, right? You almost missed it. It seemed like he was teasing, but there was also a hint of worry or some kind of anxious note in his words. He looked over at him and offered a weak smile. I'm really sorry. I would have sent a text or even called, but we didn't exchange numbers earlier. Ah, uh, yeah, that was kind of foolish, huh? He laughed and pulled out his phone. It was a newer model than yours, with a bright yellow case around it. Should we remedy that right now? He nodded and pulled out your phone. After you entered his number and sent a text, he added you to his contacts under your name. There. Now you'll be able to send him a message or call. So what exactly happened, if you don't mind telling me? Ah, oh, well. During the time it took you to rehash the event, starting with your neighbor waiting for you outside, a waitress came and took your drink orders. Oh, can I just get whatever you have on tap tonight? Certainly. Do you want anything? He looked at you sweetly. You blushed and shook your head. Yeah, sorry. I have a few more days to go until I can drink. Yeah, I'll just have something else. Uh, what? Let's see. Peach tea with lemon, uh, dark soda, water, or coffee. Jeez, I guess I'll have a dark soda. I Wait, no, peach tea would be lovely. Heck yeah. It was Griffin's turn to blush. <laughs> no, uh, sorry. Uh, I should have asked. He gave an awkward laugh and changed his order to something called a uh, Roy Rangers. Roy Rogers? Nah. You didn't have to do that. Not of mine. He smiled at you again. It's no fun to be the only one drinking. It also makes me feel way older than you than I probably am. You thought this might be a nice time to start getting to know him. Uh, how old are you anyway? 25. 25, huh? Yeah, I mean, around the same age. Griffin lets out a boisterous laugh at your tone, which made you blush. It's not really that bad, is it? No, of course not. Anyway, what was I saying before? Well, earlier you were telling me about what happened to your apartment. Right, so after Sophie and I went inside, she found something in my bedroom. I can't even describe it without feeling disgusted all over again. His eyebrows raised in surprise. Well, now I'm even more curious. Let's just say that whoever was there was certainly fond of a specific garment of mine. You try your best not to just outright say someone used my underwear for splooshies. You had more tact than that at least. No, I don't. <laughs> Griffin's face flushed a bright red, and he held a head over his mouth for a moment. Wow, that's just... wow. After he settled from the initial reaction, he put his hand down and gave you a sympathetic look. I'm sorry we went through that. What happened after? We checked the other parts of the apartment more thoroughly and found whoever it was left through the window. It wasn't closed properly, and there were marks on the shelf that suggested that stuff had been moved around. I mean, great detective skills, but also, this is probably one of the only times it's good to not actually dust on a regular basis. He laughed and you felt a little embarrassed. I'm teasing, no worries. Anyways, after we saw that, my neighbor suggested we should call the police. Did you? Yeah, she was right that the intruders left evidence. Should be recorded. Good. I'm glad you listened to your friend. It's easy to dismiss something like this because it's hard to believe. You sound like you've had experience. Griffin shrugged in a non-committal way. I mean, I've been with a crazy person or two, but not that I ever broke into my place. Ah, uh, where are you from? Ah, uh, down the details, I see. He smiled, pondering the question for a moment. To put it simply, no, I'm not from around here. I grew up in a different city, towards the east. Maybe you've heard of it? Ocean Pass? Yeah, right. It's that really big one next to the coast, yeah? He snapped his fingers and pointed at you. That's the one! I was born and raised there. Regular old city boy here. What made you leave? Just got tired of it. He said in a simple casual way that almost sounded final, so you didn't pry any further. Yeah, I do have to say that Rosemuth is pretty decent. So far, I've met at least one person I liked. He looked right at you as he said that. Your heart skipped a beat, and you felt a tingly sensation spread from your chest to your fingertips and toes. It was so unbelievably bold sometimes that it threw you for a loop. Well, I'm glad. This place isn't so bad. Is this your hometown? Yeah, born and raised as well. I used to live on the south side until I grew up and moved out. First chance I got. Not bad, huh? What? The way you said it. Sounds like your home life or your childhood weren't up to snuff. You chuckled, shrugging nonchalantly. You could say that. What do you do for work? I'm a pharmacy technician. You blinked and tilted your head in question. Really? He laughed. A sound that was quickly becoming endearing to you. Yeah, why? I don't know what I was expecting, but... It wasn't that. Is this something you see yourself continuing to pursue? Would you want to be a pharmacist? He rubbed his chin thoughtfully, setting his gaze skyward as he bowled over the question. I've thought about it, sure, but I haven't come to a firm conclusion. I like where I am now, though. 
He looked back at you with a cheeky smile. That could change. I don't like to really wonder about the future, though. His expression changed suddenly to something more somber and serious. I just don't see the point of thinking ahead when none of us know what's going to happen two hours from now, let alone ten years. He had a feeling that this was a point of contention for him, so he didn't bother to continue that topic. So, what about hobbies? You have any hobbies or anything you're really passionate about? Well, would you consider asking cute bookstore clerks out on dates passion? He grinned and you felt your face heat up. He called you cute, and now you felt warm and buttery. Depends. How many times have you considered doing it as passion? His face was full of joy and life as he chuckled. Yeah, I like your wit, Lionel. Seriously, though, you're the first. Yeah, I was only joking. So, answer the first question then, Mr. Wells. He blushed severely when he said that and looked away. I suppose I like photography. I just bought a newer camera and I'm excited to try it out soon. Oh my god, please don't tell me this is a Dahmer situation. Jeez, no. Oh, when you like photographing? Birds mostly. Am I a bird? Am I a pretty bird? Birds. Yeah, birds. There's something delicate about the way they look at the things around them. When they move their heads and when they hop on the ground looking for food. Griffin smiled getting a far-off look in his eyes as if he was imagining his favorite bird just living its day-to-day -day life and existing. It was rather adorable. And the way they take off from the ground or from a tree branch, flawlessly, lifting into the air as if gravity is something that doesn't exist to them. He seemed to notice how quiet we were and ducked his head shyly. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm getting carried away now. Hey, no complaints there. I think it's really sweet the way you talk about them. He blushed and grinned. What about you? Got any hobbies? I like riding. I used to anyway. I haven't kept up with it. Ah, writing. Have you published anything? Yeah, well, I guess. It was a novel from a long time ago. Like, when I was still in high school. That's so charming, but why haven't you kept up with it? I know. Life gets in the way sometimes. And then it feels like it's been harder to take hold of the further I got away from it. Griffin had a sympathetic look on his face. I hope that changes for you. If you ever need a beta reader, I'm happy to volunteer. He laughed, blushing and smiling broadly. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind. Resuming your meals, you both were comfortable with silence settling between you as you ate. You didn't want your food to get cold and you did feel a little bad for making him wait so long just to eat. Once you're finished, Griffin paid for both your meals. Oh gosh, uh, you were appreciative. Thanks for treating me. Of course, it's no problem. You left the night all in high spirits, regardless of how you felt about the date in the first place. You and Griffin walked peacefully next to each other on the sidewalk, with him closest to the road. I had a nice night tonight, Lionel. Me too. Griffin chuckled quietly, lost in thought for a moment. You were content to keep walking, both of you going towards the bus stop. He lived close by. Not really. I really need to take the bus home. Yeah, that's a shame. I was hoping you could go somewhere else. Like where? Not sure. He laughed, looking awkward. Yeah, I'm having such a great time. I guess I just don't want the night to end. You had reached the bus stop and looked at him then. You smiled and nodded. Yeah, I get it. I won't make you miss your bus though. It'll be another half hour before it's here, so we can keep talking if you want. Sounds good to me. You spent the next half hour talking casually about different things until your bus came. Take care on your way home, Lionel. Thanks, Griffin. You too. You parted ways and boarded the bus. You were finally back at your apartment, settling down for the night. It was well after 10 o'clock and you didn't have to go to work tomorrow, so you were sitting at your desk. Your phone vibrated on your desk as you checked on it. Hello, Lionel. Did you make it home okay? Yeah, Griffin. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I made it home just fine. Thanks for checking. That's great. Uh, I won't take up much of your time anymore. Good night. Good night. Your chat up on your computer starts pinging it and you open it up. Love. You on? Ty! Hey, how's it going? I mean, it could be worse. But I don't want to get into it right now. You sure? I'm here to listen, you know. And I appreciate you big time, Ty B. I just want to chill and relax. Day was stressful. Okay, no problem. So, I installed Indecent. Oh, how's it going so far? Just got back from a date, actually. <gasps> Message deleted. That's good. What was it? I actually didn't get it from the app. Well, not really. What do you mean? We met at my work. And he said I look familiar. Then he told me that we matched on the app. You didn't know that? No! Oh! Never went back after I created my profile. You're hopeless, you know that. How was the date, though? Good. I was excited for once, and good thing, because it was great. Just then, your phone buzzed, and you looked down, wondering if it was Griffin. Oh. Triss. 
Bestie, what do you want to do for your birthday? He read the text but didn't respond and went back to the conversation on your computer. Message deleted. I'm glad you had a good night. Did you get his number? Uh, of course. Any plans for a second date? Your phone bust again and you ignored it this time. Ah, I don't know about that. Maybe. I hope so. So exciting. So happy for you. Truly. My little love is growing up. Shut up, Ty. <laughs> what about you? Have you found a date using the app? Message deleted? I don't use it. What? Are you kidding me, Ty? You talked up this app like it was a big deal. So I downloaded it. And you don't even use it? Some IRL friends of mine were talking about it. I thought you should give it a go. And guess what? You didn't even need it. I hate you so much right now. Eh. No, you don't. It was your phone again. You finally looked at the messages. Did you really just leave me on red? Lionel, seriously. Hello? You're being really rude right now, you know that? You can talk to your little friends on computer, but not me. You felt a jolt course through you when you read that. How did he know you were talking to someone else? A new message came in. I can see you're online on Gamer Gap right now, idiot. Uh, jeez, what are you, a stalker? Oh, now I matter, huh? Stop it. I was just helping someone on my game real quick. You didn't answer my question. What question? What do you want for your birthday? I don't know, Tris. You'll think of something. Right, because no one would care otherwise. You felt that knife in your heart. Ow! The heck is wrong with you? I'll figure something out. You insane? Good night, Lionel. Tris never responded, and you put your phone down. Feeling worse than you did before, you opened his message. Python's ping on your computer brought you back to the conversation with him. So, are you feeling like it might go somewhere? I mean, it was only a first date, but you never know. Ah. Love, you still there? Oh, no, sorry, sorry. Bestie is being a butt right now. Uh-oh, what now? Getting jealous because I'm talking to you. Instead of replying to them in 0.05 seconds. Well, I'm worth getting jealous over. Hee. <laughs> right. Mr. Steal your friend over here. Yes, flatter me more. Ty, best boy. Ha! Anyway, everything okay? It's fine, it's fine. Are you okay, though? What do you mean? You keep deleting messages before I can even see them. Yeah, sorry. Truth is, I'm a little tired from today. I keep messing up my words. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I feel you. I'm actually really tired, so I'm gonna head to bed. Good night, love. Talk to you later. Night, Ty. You're locked off, getting ready for bed. You shovel down into your blankets. The events of today fought each other for precedence in your mind, but somehow you were able to fall asleep. The last lingering thought of the night was wondering what tomorrow might bring. And that was Duplicity. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you guys want to play this game for yourself, link to the game will be in the description below. I'd say this game was fairly fascinating. Had a decent mix between like introducing the plot and the characters as well. So hey, and you know, I'm I'm actually questioning in the back of my head, like who could the stalker be? Considering everyone is so freaking sus right now. I mean, for all I know, it could have just, it could have very well been a little girl who like broke into my apartment. Who knows? But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy yourselves. Uh, have a lovely rest of the day, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lionel, signing off. Ciao.